basketball game in the first half, but then slots game management in the second. Talk me through how he does that and why he does it. I mean, in the first half, I would say, I mean, honestly, in throughout the whole game, the only truly dangerous phases of play that Aston Villa had were either directly off of set pieces or were the phase of play after a set piece. So it was either from the corner where the ball was headed at goal or it was off a free kick and it's within that phase of play. Outside of that, from open play, every time Villa got into a dangerous position, either Kanate or Virgil van Dijk were there to, 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 to clean up, right? So from open play, defensively, I thought that we were flawless. Set pieces, I, it's been my prerogative for the whole season. I don't think that it's where it should be. I think that team get threatening opportunities against us, but then that's why you employ Kelleher because he's the best second choice goalkeeper out there. And when Allison goes down, he can make those kinds of saves. When it comes, you know, offensively, Darwin Nunes obviously scores the crazy goal and then he misses. I mean, it's not even that he misses. He doesn't hit the target. Like, that's the issue I have. I don't care if my striker doesn't score. I care if my striker doesn't hit the frame of goal. But we were still, like, we were getting into dangerous areas. We were going through progressive phases of play. We were able to deal with their press, even though in the first half they weren't pressing that much. And then the second half, to me, it just felt like every time we had the ball, let's just slow this game as, as let's make this game as slow as we possible can. Uh, as slow as we possibly can and sort of lull Aston Villa. I think at times we were a little bit too patient. We were a little bit too slow. But you know what? Arnie Slot's results have kind of proven that my opinion doesn't matter because he gets the results on the pitch. No matter how patient or no matter how passive we look, we continue to get the job done. And then, you know, we had a couple of counterattacks in that second half. The the one where the I forget his name, but Mohamed Salah, you know, he put in a, a forward pass on a counterattack from another corner. And he makes that, you know, saving tackle, preventing oh, Lewis Diaz from getting it. Exactly. That that could have been 2-0 right there. And then, you know, I got to feel bad. I, I kind of feel bad for Cody Gakpo because on that Salah goal, he decided to go near post, which is the most difficult option. And he could have just laid it off to, to Cody Gakpo right in front of the goal. But you know what? He scored. We went up 2-0. And then from there, it was, you know, easy cleanup. There was, I don't think there was another chance for the rest of the game. So to me, it's just like at moments – it seems that Slot is deliberately slowing the play down and he trusts us to handle those situations. And even if we give away the ball while we're playing passively, we correct the mistake so quickly. I mean, Kanate, what he has been this season is nothing short of the second best defender in the world. And that's only because of Virgil van Dyke's reputation. I don't personally, I don't even think van Dyke's been better than Kanate. I think Kanate has to do more work than Virgil because teams attack down that side more than they attack down Virgil's side. And he's just flawless. I think he made one error, and it was when he hurt himself. He jumped up to try to head a ball, lands awkwardly, can't get back up. It leads to an opportunity for Aston Villa. Mm. Not going to blame the guy if he gets hurt. He got hurt, got back up, kept going. But, you know, we just we choose our moments to slow the game down. And when we slow the game down, everything seems controlled. And even we give it up, we clean it up just like that. And all of a sudden, we got the ball back. So, you know, easy sailing at, at the, towards the end of that second half. And the only time I was really holding my breath was under a set piece. But every team in the world can say that. Set pieces are dangerous. Whether you're prime Manchester City, prime Barcelona, prime Real Madrid, a team can score on a corner. And we, we just we dealt with them today. Mm. Uh, Ram, you're always someone that's wax lyrical about Allison, calling him your player of the year when nobody else was. Kelleher, though, has come in. And we know he isn't as good. But again today, you know, he stopped you going in at half time two one two one down, which could have changed the course of this game. How important has he been as your number two, not just today, but this season at large? Oh, he's been massively important. Um, I think it showed why Arnestot was so desperate for for us to keep him because no matter what the situation is, as as good as Allison can be, unfortunately, and it, it pains me to say it he gets these really stupid injuries, which I really, I don't like. And he gets sidetracked for another eight to 10 weeks, which is, can be monumental in, in a, in a title push or a title challenge. And for someone like Kelleher, just to come in and just maintain the level, which is the most important thing. I don't, when I, when I see Kelleher on the team sheet, I'm like, I'm still confident we're going to win the game. I'm still confident we're going to get a clean sheet. Mm. And I think the players are also bought into that as well. And that's a massive thing that you need to do with these defenders. These defenders can now rely on, on a player like Kelleher. And it's important to have that level of confidence throughout the entire team. And look, Alisson's my guy, but what Keller is doing is, is at a very, very high level. 
Um, and if it was Allison, we'd be whacked in lyrical, but because it's Kelleher and he is second choice, um, he just doesn't get that credit. Um, and that's that's something that we just have to accept. But at the end of the day, we've got the best first goal, first choice goalkeeper in the world, we've got the best second choice goalkeeper in the world, and we've got the best third choice goalkeeper in the world. We're just completely stacked in every in that goalkeeper department. That's how it is. That's how I see it. And I'm, I'm happy it's, just, very happy. it's just ridiculously greedy, in my opinion. <laughs> Can we, can we just say that the, the, the commentary on BT Sport said Emmy Martinez was the best goalkeeper in the world when Alisson is definitely the best goalkeeper in the world and arguably Keller is better than him. I thought that was just like a, a lot of Liverpool fans were tweeting I think about that's it. because like, he won the award though, didn't he? He, he won, won the award. award. He won the award. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's it's wasn't even recognised in the top again, 10. Sam, proving that the awards are bullshit. Do you get what I mean? Like, keeps happening. No, you keep getting the awards every ball. week. Do you want to say Not that? America. Sam, well, we haven't heard from you on the show yet, bro. Um, look, you're, you're playing well. You're five points clear. I'm going to ask you this question and then open it up to the rest of the panel. Is it your title to lose from this point? I'm going to go out and say I was wrong. Um, when I knew Klopp was leaving, I said, I made a statement. I said, because I don't trust FSG, I said, I don't believe Liverpool can win the league in three to four years or a major honour in three to four years. I was wrong. We can win this league. Straight up, we can win this league. The way I'm seeing us playing, the way that the, the mood around Anfield, I always said this, for you to beat Man City, forget being in the title race. You need to step on their necks when they are down bad. Yeah, That's how we beat them the last time. We need to go and do that again. And right now, What's going on is that Man City are dropping points, we're picking up points. The gap is five. And I understand in November, five points, not really that much. But in Man City's down period, we need to have a good period. And that's what we're doing right now. We can definitely win this league. We are in the title race, 100%. We can definitely win this league. It all, for me, depends on injuries and that January transfer window. Now, on the clock, I always said... I believe Klopp should at least have won two Premier League titles. The one that we won and the, the next season after that. The only reason why we didn't win that is because FSG bottled it in January and bought those championship defenders in Ozan Kabak and Ben Davis, who he's still a hologram. I don't, I don't think I ever saw him. FSG, we cannot go into January and not buy another CDM, not buy other players. You did not spend anything in the summer you have no excuse i know we got chiesa that was like 13 million that's nothing we haven't even seen chiesa he's, he's we made money for like one minute <laughs> yeah. so like come on now this is liverpool's prime opportunity to go and win the league again fsg do not bottle it don't bottle it again because you don't have anybody to hide behind you don't have Klopp. And you don't have anybody else to hide behind. This is on you. Spend the money, get the players that we need in January. Because you we know we know Man City are going to get some players because the Rodri's out. We might we. I don't know the Arsenal situation, but they might get some players. We need to step on Man City's net, especially get pick up these wins, and get um somebody in January. This the, this league should be ours. The only and, way we win this league uh, title. Yeah. Is, is if we're, we're so far ahead of Man City and Arsenal that even if they do catch up and we have three, four bad results, it's too late. That's the only way. So, like, no. that, that's that's what we did in, in, in 2019-2020 because the second yeah. half of the season, look, here, let's let's be objective here. I'm not even trying to do, like, downplay what we're doing right now or anything, but second half of the season, we go to, away to Aston Villa, away to Brighton. We play Man United at home, which is a rivalry game, can never be underestimated. We play Everton, who's going to give 150% to try to stop us. We go away to the Etihad, and we play Arsenal on the 36th match day. What we cannot do is, is put ourselves in a position where we have zero margin for error. So what we should be doing now, as Manchester City and Arsenal are dropping points, is exactly what we're doing right now, which is create as big a gap as possible, in order which 
we you have to give Arsenal and City the choice of having zero margin of error. And that way, you can essentially do what we did in 2019-2020, of which even when we restarted after the COVID break and like we drew away at Everton or we lost there, lost here, it doesn't matter because the gap is so big. We're eventually going to beat a Crystal Palace at home or a beat a something like that at home and we're going to win the league. And that's the, the, the difference here. But right now, it's look, saying anyone's title to lose in November, it's too early. Regardless, even if City in our position, even if Arsenal are in our position, Spurs, wh whichever club in the world is in our position, it's too early by definition because it's November. Now, if we yeah. sign players in January, as I agree with Samuel, if we do get a, like January 1st comes around, we're 12 points ahead, 15 points ahead, and we sign as a Wendy, fair enough. You can put that expectation on us. But as things stand currently, it's too early. It's Slot's first season as well.